following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Today we are uh, continuing with our lectures related with the archetypes that we often talk about from the book of Genesis. The title of uh, today's lecture is Alchemical Archetypes of Genesis, which follows the previous uh, two lectures that we gave already uh, this in order to comprehend deeper all of these elements that we are uh, talking about. As you can see in the first graphic of the PDF, we have here Rebecca and Isaac. Isaac in that picture is uh, suffering blindness. And this is why uh, Jacob, in the very bottom of the picture, is passing as Esau, his twin brother, in order to receive the inheritance that Abraham gave to Isaac. And according to the lineage, a son of Isaac has to receive the inheritance, which is the divine blessing from above. And uh, uh, Rebecca advises Jacob to pass as Esau or Isau in order to receive the blessing. And uh, we are going to explain, of course, about this all meaning because it's written in the Bible and it's happening immediately after uh, what we talked in the last lecture when Isaac was going to be uh, sacrificed uh, by Abraham. We explained there that that sacrifice of uh, Abraham or the sacrifice of Isaac by Abraham is a transposition, we will say, of spiritual elements from the physical world to the spiritual world. We stated that the Mount Moria, where Abraham was going to perform that sacrifice, is uh, Sephirah Gebura. And of course, the sacrifice, as you always see in different pictures, where he is holding a knife, is actually the flaming sword that the monad, the initiate, wings in the first initiation of mayor mysteries in which he has to prove his uh, mercy or his charity by giving uh, his son to to the almighty which is uh, the top in the top left column of the tree of life which is bina jehovah elohim we explain that uh, that uh, is of course a sacrifice that happens in any initiate. 
where all the values that we gain in the first initiation of mirror mystery is related with Malkut, which is uh, Ishmael, is uh, absorbed by the monad. And of course, the cutting of the life of Isaac is the cutting of the silver cord that unites those psychological elements gained in the first initiation uh, cut by the sword of Abraham. It's not that literally he's going to sacrifice his son as we imagine always by uh, slaughtering his son in the altar of sacrifice and inserting the knife in his heart. Remember that the silver cord is united to different areas of the physical body, the heart, the solar plex. If we cut that silver cord, then the life is absorbed by the superior worlds and in the physical world remains an empty house. But of course, God is the mercy of mercies. And uh, he in no way wants to leave the physical body or the physical person, the initiate in the physical world, poor. In Kabbalah, the physical body is the poor that needs the richness of heaven. And if that silver core is cut, then that, uh, uh, those values that we gain the first initiation are absorbed and we don't uh, enjoy them. But thanks to that uh, uh, angel that avoids Abraham to cut the silver cord of Isaac, those values still remained, even though they are up there in the monad, not in the physical body, but somehow they are still united with Ishmael, Ishmael which is the physical, the physical body. In that way, the initiate always receives from his uh, monad or her monad the inspiration, the spiritual guidance that he already gained. But the monad is giving that to the physical body in measurement because he knows that the physicality of any one of us is then of the ego, defects, vices, and errors that we build because of the transgression of eating the fruit of the tree of good and evil. And all of this is precisely the, the, the drama that any the initiate lives physically and spiritually in order to return to the promised land, which is uh, Eden. And this is precisely the meaning of the, uh, of the sacrifice of Isaac by Abraham. This is something very important that uh, now we are going to follow in order to study more deeply uh, Abraham. Because we have stated that Abraham symbolizes the innermost. <coughs> and here in the second graphic, we find the tree of life in the right and two quotations taken from the Bible. In order for us to understand deeply what the book of Zohar always explains cryptically, but very openly and clear to those that know the letters of the Hebrew Kabbalah in the tree of life. The Bible, it is stated, is a word of God, and it is, but it's a written word of God, and that uh, word of God was written with Hebrew letters, and there are 22 letters. So the way in which the prophets wrote uh, the Bible, and especially the book of Genesis, is a very cryptic manner in order for only those who are serious and walk on the path of self-realization will uncover it. Now we are giving it to humanity because it's necessary 
in, uh, in order uh, to humanity to know the mysteries of uh, the Bible or the Word of God. For that, of course, we had to be uh, knowledgeable in the letters of uh, the Hebrew alphabet. And in the second graphic, we see uh, four letters that uh, relates to the Hebrew alphabet. First, in the first triangle, the tree of life, we find the letter Aleph. And we show there how with the letter Aleph, we write El, Ela, Elohim, which are always names given in Hebrew language, in Kabbalah, to the divine. Above uh, this letter Aleph, we find the letter He in yellow. This letter He, as you know, is uh, that letter that is always repeated in the holy name of God, yod He vav He, And it is because that letter He is the symbol of the feminine aspect of divinity. When we uh, place the holy name of God in our physicality, Yod is in the head. He is in the throat. Because the throat is another uterus with the word is gestated. So Vav represents the spinal column. And He, again, is a sexual organ which creates life physically and spiritually, psychologically. This is how we place the holy name of God, yod he bav he in our physicality. And this is very important to understand. But remember that the letter He spells He Aleph. And that means that within the letter He is hidden Aleph. And Aleph hides also the letter He. Because this is where it, from where it emanated. The second triangle is the letter Shin. The third triangle is the letter Mem. Aleph, Shin, and Mem are what we call the three mother le uh, letters in Kabbalah. That hides different meanings in order for us to visualize the tree of life and to understand what the written word in the Bible is telling us. Uh, for instance, the word Abraham that we always talk about, and this is the main uh, name that we always point because is the innermost, the monad, the spirit in each one of us. Abraham is written, as you see here in the letter, uh, Aleph, Bav, Resh, He, Mem. <coughs> if you take the letter Aleph, and Bet, or the name of Abraham, then you pronounce Abba. That means father. And if you take the letter Aleph and the last letter of the name Abraham, then you uh, form another word with two letters, M. It sounds like the letter M, right? That means mother in Hebrew. So in the word Abraham, we find father, mother, united there in one. That point us that the name Abraham is androgynous. But of course, in the unfoldment of these archetypes within each one of us, Abraham represents the male aspect in us. And uh, the wife of Abraham, which is uh, Sarai, is an anagram of the Divine Mother. Sarai is written with Shin, Resh, and Yod. S pronounced Sarai or Sharai, but it's Sarai. 
uh, in the word Sarai or Sarai is written, is hidden the, the head, Reish, you see, which is the head. In that way, we know that Sarai or Reish is located in the upper triangle, the head, specifically in the throat. This is why we, the, we put it, uh, uh, we wrote Sarai in the last lecture, in the Sephira Da'at. Remember that Da'at means knowledge and relates to the throat. So Abraham and Sarah also represents the two aspects of divinity that unfold from Bina in Da'at that we call Abba and M, and sometimes we say Abba and Aima, mother. So that's why Abraham means the father from the high, or the exalted father. But also we can see there that the mother is hidden within his name as well. So Sarai and Abraham are here, as you see, in the throat. And uh, the other Abraham that we find here is also an unfoldment, because we always state it, that Abraham, the spirit, our monad, is an unfoldment, or emerges from the Trinity. For that Trinity, in order to fecundate Abraham, has to divide itself in two, and does it in the Sefer Abina by creating Ava and Ima, father and mother. And Abraham emerges from it as our own particular individual spirit. But remember that above Abraham is our other part of the being, the father, who is also the Holy Spirit above. And this Holy Spirit contains Father, Son, O Keter Chokmah, within, because Bina is the Holy Spirit. This is how we see it, <coughs> and remember that the Bible states that in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And here we are showing the tree of life, the heavens above and the earth the last Sephira in the very bottom. And after that says that uh, the earth was empty and without form and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the spirit of God, the Ruach Elohim, was hovering above the face of the waters. That Ruach is Hesed, because Ruach in Hebrew means spirit. So Ruach is Hesed, which is Abraham, and the name of Geburah in the world of the archetypes is Elohim Gibor. Gibor in Hebrew also means male, the male Elohim. Or oh, in this uh, uh, point that we are addressing is Isaac, the Elohim Gibor. This is why we find here when the Bible says, and the Ruach Elohim was hovering above the face of the waters. It's talking about our own particular monad. Because our monad is formed by Adman Budi, as the Master Samael states. Adman Budi is Ruach Elohim, or Hesed Geburah, in each one of us. And in the first initiation, Elohim, or the archetypes, or the values of the physical body, are absorbed by Geburah. And then we have the birth of a master in the superior worlds. When somebody reaches the first initiation of Mayor Mysteries, has the right to call himself a master in the superior worlds. 
not in the physical world, because remember that those values were absorbed by the monad. But still there is a union with what we call Ishmael, which is the physicality of each one of us, with those values. Because the Nietzsche has to continue his path into Yesod, Hod, Netzach, Tibreth, etc. And to walk all of the Sephiroth of the Tree of Life. And this is very important for us to understand and comprehend and the position of the three mother letters, Mem in the third triangle, Shin in the second triangle, and Aleph in the first. And the letter He above them. If you read the whole word there with these four letters, Hashem. This is how you read it. Hashem, you know, means the name. So when an, a Kabbalist says Hashem, he is obviously taking the whole tree of life and the eight soft together, like uniting all of the being in one part. That is Hashem. To self realize oneself is to form Hashem in us. That's precisely our goal. But of course, in our physicality, which is the laboratory of the alchemist, from where we take all the elements that we need in order to perform all of this. Of course, those elements are symbolized in the three mother letters. The letter Mem symbolizes water. The letter Shin symbolizes fire. And the letter Aleph symbolizes the wind, the air. These three elements, alchemical, are in our physicality, which is the salt of the earth. And we have to see that from the alchemical, Kabbalistic point of view in order to comprehend what uh, many uh, books in the Bible talks about. For instance, we quoted in the left Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, where it is written, Who went up to heaven and descended? Who has gathered the Spirit in his fists? Who has bound waters in his garment? Who stirs up all of earth's insignificant things? What is the name? And what the name of their son? You know this, it says at the end, right? But when you said, I don't know that, right? But it's written in the Kabbalistic alchemical manner in order for us to understand. Because the letter Mem symbolizes water. And you find, for instance, that heavens is written ha shamaim in Hebrew. And you find there all the letters that we were naming here. Exception with the letter Aleph, which is hidden within the letter He. Ha shamaim. But we find the letter Yod. And ha shamaim. And also in the waters. Ha maim. Is how you said the waters. You only add the letter Shin and then you said Ha Shamaim, the heavens. So Hamaim are here. But if you see in the word Hamaim, as we explain in other lectures, if you read it backwards, then you will find the two uh, words. Mi and Ma. Mi and Ma, which represent the two polarities of the waters. Mi, because has the letter Yod there, is masculine. And Ma, because has the letter He there, 
symbolizes feminine. The masculine and feminine aspects of the water. Hmm? So there, you find that when we are talking about me and ma, we are talking about the two polarities of Elohim, which rules the third triangle of the tree of life. In our physicality, those two waters, me, the waters of above, of Shamaim, are related with the cerebral spinal fluid that contains the brain and the medulla. You see, the brain and the medulla is floating in those waters called me. And the waters that we call semen, the creative waters of sexuality in the genitalia, are symbolized by the letter mem and he, ma. So we have those two waters in our physicality, me and ma. So what the Proverbs is telling us is that simple, that the Shakti potential of me and ma went up to heaven and descended. But if you are not an alchemist, you don't know how. But transmutation of the sexual energy, the me, of course, go up and descend. Because me stirs up all of the earth in significant things. The earth is always feminine. So when you use your head, your brain, and start doing the work, because for in order to do the work, you have to use reasoning. We as animals have all in our physicality. But we are the only animal that think, the reason. So by knowing the doctrine of alchemy and Kabbalah is how you utilize and control the most difficult waters to control, which are the sexual waters. In order to do that, you need, of course, to concentrate those waters where me is in order to control ma. And that's why it says there, what is the name? Right? A name, Shama, or Shem, as we say in Hebrew, is name. And you see in the word name, Shin Mem He, name of the earth, water. And what is in Abraham, the shame, the name of their son. In us, if we work with the waters. Because in the beginning, the Ruah Elohim was hovering upon the face of the waters. What waters? Our waters. These waters that we are talking about. And if we concentrate on our innermost, and then we start doing the work with me and Ma. And that's why. The book of Genesis states, these are the generations of the archetypes of the heavens and of the earth. Behibaram, when they were created. In the day that Jehovah Elohim made the earth and the heavens. How is it that Jehovah Elohim makes the heavens and the earth inside of us? Thanks to me and Ma, thanks to the waters. And then you understand that alchemically, how everything is done within you. That's why in Kabbalah, it states, we state, the universe was created for the sake of Abraham. Well, if you don't know Kabbalah and alchemy, we said, what? Just for the Abraham that came 5,000 and some years ago, for that prophet, the whole universe was created. This is too much, right? But you understand that Abraham lives within you and within every single human being. You understand that the whole universe are forces, right? Atziluth, Bria, Yetzirah, and Asia that comes into your physicality. 
And all of that is created for the sake of Abraham, the monad. If the monad takes advantage of all of those forces, and then all creation starts. All what is written in Genesis. But Abraham has to hover above me in Ma. In all your central nervous system. That's why it is written that the central nervous system is the throne of Abraham. The throne of the spirit. The Zohar states the explanation of the forming of the names Elohim in Abraham is as follows. yod the Holy One, took me, which means who, and joined it to Ele in this form, Elohim. You see, this Elohim is here in Geburah. This is Isaac, the first, the first initiation. That monad is becoming a god because he knows how to eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil. Remember, the day that you eat from that fruit, you will be like gods. And this is precisely the name of here of Geburah is Elohim Gibor. Be like gods. You see? Not like Yod Heba Elohim Abab. No, like. Because you have to enter and develop that. What the people understand is that we are going to be gods with the ego very fat. No, no, no. They're not referring to us. They're referring to the monad. The monad can become an Elohim if take advantage of it. If not, it remains as it is. Uh, Hashadim, like we said, or Chaldeans, they say, right? In the Bible. He also took Ma, which means what? And joined it to Abraham, which is Hesed. So Elohim is Geburah, and Hesed is Abraham. The two of them form, of course, the Ruach Elohim. Another master that entered into the path that takes us to Nirvana. It's just the birth of a new master in heaven. That's the main point here that the Bible tells us. Because it's written that Abraham was a very close friend of God. A close friend of Elohim above. But this is inside. This is how we have to understand the archetypes. And not, and not to fall into mistakes. And to interpret that only literally in this physical world. Because all of these archetypes, or we will say, all of these masters that came to represent all of these archetypes within us were physically alive. Abraham was a prophet. Isaac as well. Jacob too. Joseph. And all of the prophets that we find in the Bible. But each one of them represents an archetype that we need to develop. Humanity, Christianity, for instance, misunderstood the message of that higher archetype which we call Jesus Christ and do not understand that that archetype is within us as well as the Jewish people and Muslims that do not understand that Abraham is something within that we have to develop and just, just that identify with the sequence, the physical sequence that happened also physically without studying the meaning of the message that each one, of our, uh, each one of them brought to humanity. But here we are unveiling this and explaining in order for us to understand what the Sohar states and many of the parts of the Bible that explains about it. That's why you have to study all the graphics that we put there in order for you to comprehend all of these symbols, cryptic language of Kabbalah, in order to understand the Bible. Here we find, for instance, 
the three patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who has in his arms Joseph. This is another archetype very important that we have to study because this is how Genesis unfolds. Now, let us go into this mystery because when you read the alphabet in Hebrew, you find that Aleph, which in Arabic is Alif, means bull, ox, cattle, cow. That's the first letter. So that's why it was represented in many ways in ancient times. The letter Aleph, just with the head of an ox with big horns. That was Aleph. It changed, of course, and now we find it as it is in this day and age, made by the great master's initiates. We find here the bull, Apis, begins with A. And of course, has the meaning. Bull is also the Brahma bull in India, represents the virility, male sexual virility of fertility. So in the word Abraham, of course, as you see there, Aleph Brahm means with this cryptic way, this anagram, exalted bull. And of course, relates to the same uh, letters of Brahma, which is Abraham. We understand that since the male positive sexual forces in us is the cerebral spinal fluid and the feminine, which is the cow, is ma, genitalia. The names of these three patriarchs relate to the worshiping of Io, according to mythology, Io, was that goddess that uh, was transformed into a cow in order to escape from the hate of uh, Rhea, the wife of Jupiter, Jupiter. And of course, uh, Jupiter transformed himself into a bull in order to fecundate her. This is a symbol that we understand. It's Abraham fecundating Sarah, the head, you see. And that's why in every single name written in Hebrew, we find, for instance, how we broke the anagram of Isaac, and you write in that way, Yod Sadik Hak. Yod Sadik Hak means Isaac, the chase, the Sadik follower of Eo, or follower of the letter Yod. Because in the letter Yod, we find the Shakti potential with which we can create spiritually speaking. Remember that Enoch, that is the, that who was the, the incarnation of the angel Metatron was the creator of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And he states that the river that comes from Eden resembles the letter Yad. That river is the sexual energy. That's why the letter Yad is the first letter written in yod heh vav -Heh, Because it's the Shakti potential through which God creates in the different steps that we are talking here in our physicality. Yod, the head, hey, the throat, vav, the spinal medulla, and hey, the sexual organs. Yod, hey, vav, hey. That is in us the holy name of God. So Isaac means the follower of Eo. And uh, 
Jacob is written Yod, Ayin, Kuf, Bab, I mean Bet. It says Yod Akab. Yod Akab, which means holding Eo by the hoof. Or holding the power of Eo, of the Yod, in other words, which is the sexual potence. Remember that uh, Jacob was born after Isaú, and it is stated that Isaú came out of the womb of Rebekah, and Jacob was holding the heel of Esau when coming out. And that's why the name, holding the hoof, right? Or the heel, in other words, of Esau. That's a meaning related with Genesis. Remember that it's written that, uh, that when God was sentencing the perpetrators of fornication, he began with Eve. Who told you to do that? The serpent. Now, it says, you will be cursed to the serpent. That serpent, of course, is the creative power used in the wrong way, the yod. That's why it is written that uh, it says, uh, I will put enmity between your seed, the seed of the woman, and the seed of the serpent. That's in us. Enmity. And we have enmity. When we start creating what we had to create within alchemically, we find enmity inside of us, the ego, which is the seed of the serpent. But all of the aspects that we are creating here are the seed of the woman, but the chaste woman, which is the divine mother, which is the sacred cow, worship in India. Because Rebecca means young cow in Hebrew. So Rebecca was the wife of Isaac. And of course, we have the other name here, Yosef, which is Yod Sof, the reed of Eo, or the staff. Is that the meaning of, uh, of the meaning of that? And of course, we find here then one, two, three, and Yosef, four alchemist worshippers of Eo or Rebecca, which is the cow, the sacred young cow, the Egyptian goddess Hathor. Because all of them went into Egypt. So, I mean, the Egyptians knew about these symbols, archetypes, that we're explaining here. So, of course, the writings of Moses were altered by Ezra. In the book of Ezra, he describes how to slaughter the bull, the cow, and the half. That's different. That is uh, negative, of course. People attribute those uh, alterations of Ezra to Moses. But Moses never told that. Because Moses was also another worshiper of the car. The car, you know, is the physicality. Of course, people always entangle in symbols. In India, they worship the cow and the bull. And we, we see the symbol in, in many aspects, not only in the Hebrew aspect. For instance, uh, let me show you here this uh, graphic. We find here Devi Shail Putri, which is one of the nine modifications of Durga, the Divine Mother, wife of Shiva. So this uh, Devi Shail Putri is represented with four arms and always riding on a bull. 
And also we find the Lord Data Treya, which symbolizes also with four arms and always accompanying a bull. This is a symbol very profound, which is alchemical. The four arms represents, of course, the four worlds or the four aspects that also uh, we find in the, in the Bible, the four wives of Jacob, of course. Remember that according to these patriarchs, there were four aspects or four arms of the divine mother, the cow. Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel. Those are the four matriarchs represented in the four arms. And the, and the male, those four uh, patriarchs, we will say, represents Abraham with the bull of Brahma, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph which is, of course, uh, another worshiper of the cow. This is how we see it. And this is how it is hidden in the Bible. But, of course, remember that these animals represent always a force within each one of us. Let's go into the, the third graphic. And read what the Master Samael on the old wrote. He said, Abraham, this is in quotation, I mean in brackets, the innermost is the Sephira Hesed, and Budi is Isaac the Sephira Gebura. The innermost and Budi, Abraham and Isaac, express themselves through Jacob, the human soul. The human soul is different with power. It's the third son of Noah called Yafet, which means beauty. That's why we always say that Tiferet means beauty, but in reality Tiferet means splendor. And it says beauty because it relates to Yafet, which is the third son of Noah. Therefore, the innermost with his two souls, the divine and human, officiates in, on his throne, which is the central nervous system. In us, there were the human soul, the spiritual soul, and the innermost work. That's why we take advantage and take care always of the central nervous system. The innermost is crowned with Keter Homabina, the Sephirot, Sephirotic crown. The innermost abides in the central nervous system, his temple. The temple of the innermost has two columns, Jaquin and Boaz. Jaquin is the mind and Boaz is the astral body. The mind is the sephira Netzach and the astral body is the sephira Hod. These two columns of the temple are sustained upon the cubic stone of Yesod. This cubic stone also serves as a foundation for our physicality, Malkut, the kingdom, or Ishmael. Study now the word, the name Ishmael, according to these three model letters. Of course, the first is Yod, which is the Shakti potential that we work with. The second is Shin, which is fire. Then Mem, which is water. Ishma, and then the letter Aleph, which is the head. In other words, the word Ishmael comes from the very bottom. The Yad, the Shakti potential of the sexual energy, goes. Ish, the fire. Mael, above to the head. This is how you see in your physicality, in your life. So, in other words, the word Ishmael, the name Ishmael means he who listened to God. Do you see the word in which is written in the way that it is formed the, the name from the very bottom to the top? Ishmael. It means that in order to listen to God, you have to put an activity in your spinal medulla. Ishmael. 
Ishmael existed. But he represents the physicality, whether you are a Jewish, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Christian, a Taoist, whatever. This is how we name it, your physicality, in Kabbalah, Ishmael. So to state that Ishmael is certain races here, it might be related to that archetype that also represent, was represented many years ago, thousands of years ago, and that still many people are identified with that personality, as they are identified with the personality of Jesus and the personality of Abraham and all of those great masters that came in order to represent what we have within and we have to perform. So remember always, Ishmael is your physicality. And this is how there you find it in Malkut. That's why Ishmael says was the, 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 the son of Zara. I mean, uh, Agar, the Egyptian slave, which is Malkut. See the graphic in the right, and then you will uh, see the unfoldment of these uh, archetypes. Now, let us read what the Zohar states, which is very important, related with the letter Aleph, which is the first that we explain means bull, cow, cattle, ox. The upper right yard in the shape of the letter Aleph symbolizes the head. Keter. The beginning and the lower left yod in, in Yesod, the nice sphere, symbolizes the end, the genitalia, here. Throughout the four worlds of Kabbalah, the universe, all classes of beings, Elohim, are in their central nervous system, letter Vav, impressed with its signature, both those in heaven and those on earth. This is what the Zohar states. I mean, if you understand, as we explain in the lectures, that the letter Aleph represents the spinal medulla, the head and the sexual organs, or the two waters, as the Kabbalists in Zohar states, the waters above and the waters below, and the firmament in the middle of those waters, which is the spinal medulla. That's the letter Aleph. That's the bull. That's the cow. Though it includes many forms, yet they, the Elohim, are but one. Ehad, full letter Aleph. You know the word Ehad means one. And that's why it's written with the letter Aleph in the beginning. How we explain that? Aleph is, of course, in the first triangle. And the letter Het, which is the eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, represents the eight sephiroth beneath Keter, because Keter is Aleph. Chokma, Bina, Chesed, Gebura, Tifereth, Netzach, and Hod, Yesod. Those are the eight of the letter Het. And Aleph is Keter. Echa. And Dalet is Malkut, because Dalet represents being the four letter of the Hebrew alphabet, represents the four arms, the four rivers, the four elements, the four seasons, and all the four aspects of Malkut. Because Malkut is always represented by the equal cross with equal arms for the four elements. That, that's the word Ehad, meaning that the whole tree of life is one. Ehad. And of course, Dalet is or means door. So in the word Echad, we are seeing 
that the entrance into the initiation is the letter Dalet, because it's the door. Our physicality is Dalet. How we enter into Dalet? By knowing that. And this word that, which means knowledge, is also the meaning of Eden, which is also with the letter Dalet there. All of these Hebrew letters hide in different ways the number four that we are studying here because it's very important to us to understand this number four. But have you see there the number four? yod hey bab hey is a tetragrammaton, which is one. Because this is the name of God, and God is one. yod hey bab hey ehad But in us, alchemically, is how we see it here. By the higher part, the upper yad of it, the letter left, is symbolized the divine mind and thought, as also the upper firmament of the, of the spiritual world. Beneath it, the upper yod, and in the middle of Aleph, is the letter vav, the numerical value of which is six, denoting the six degrees of objective reasoning between the supreme mind and binah, the firmament above the Hayot of the hidden living creatures. You know Hayot? Ha-Kadosh? The four living creatures of Ezekiel? The lion, the bull, the eagle, and the man. Those are the four. Hayot Ha-Kadosh that we name. And of course, between them is the six degrees of objective reasoning developed in the spinal medulla is how you develop the six degrees of objective reasoning in this universe. It implies not only the head, but implies all of the central nervous system, which is the throne of the spirit, who is the one that acquires those objective reasoning, and the human soul expresses it. The light emanating from the divine or upper yod is expressed in the word Barashith, of which the first part, Bra, contains the initial letters of the name Abraham, to which scripture refers in Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. Beneath that, the Kabbalist of the Zohar explains how this Three Murti or three unity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Keter, Humao, and Bina, develops in every of the patriarchs. In Abraham. And Yodhaba appeared to Abraham as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. It means at the midday, when the sun is very strong. The esoteric meaning of which is as follows. When Abraham, he said, sat at the door of his tent, that is, at that, the gate separating the three higher sephiroths and the seven lower sephirothic world, symbolized by the letter Aleph, he felt the great heat of the day. That is, he became mentally and spiritually enlightened by the divine light of the first Logos, Keter, the Father. Because he is actually the unfoldment of the Father. His name means Exalted Father. The light of the second Logos, Chokmah, the Son, was beheld by Isaac Geburah when in the cool of the evening and the sun was going down, he prayed for the coming of this light as it is written. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening. Chokmah, the second Logos, is the one that descends in the Bodhisattva and goes down 
to give light to the world. It is called wisdom, chokmah. The light of the third logos, Bina, the Holy Spirit, that proceeds from the union of the other two, was that seen by Jacob, Tifereth, as it is written in Genesis chapter 32, verse 31. And as he, Jacob, passed Peniel in Jesod, the sun rose up him, and he halted upon his thigh. At the evening, he beheld the light of Bina, the Holy Spirit, called and known as the Netzach of Israel, victory of Israel. And he halted on his thigh, because this light of the Sephirotic origin constitutes the thigh in the Sephirotic figure. His thigh, not thighs, for as just said, he beheld the light of Netzach, which is only of the fourth degree, Sohar. You see, Netzach relates to the, the leg, or the thigh, in other words, because Yesol relates to the sexual organs. That means that uh, the work that Jacob was doing was directly with the Holy Spirit. Because the thigh symbolizes directly the sexual organs. When you read thigh in the Bible, it's pointing to the sexual phallus or to the genitalia, female genitalia. And this is what we have to understand. In this scale, Jacob, that is, this, uh, this is with the problem halting in the, in the thigh, you know, when he fights with the angel, it's related with the sexual force. That he is fighting, how to transmute that sexual force in, uh, in Jesod. So all of that, of course, is hidden in the letter Aleph. As you see here, as the Zohar. This is literally by the Zohar. And we wrote in brackets many explanations in order to make it more understandable for all of those that follow the Bible. Because the Bible is the word of God, but we have to know how to read in order to follow the word of God. Here we find uh, what Master Samael on the wall wrote in relation with the letter Dalet, the number four. He says, in the words yod hey vav hey we find the mystery of the Tetragrammaton, the Holy Four. The four worlds, the four words, the four elements. More profoundly, we find our being, our most complete divinity. From the Ein Sof, which is a super, a super divine atom of each one of us, the three primary forces, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, emanate and give their final synthesis. Three plus one equals four. Tetragrammaton is yod he vav he. This is the sacred summation of the number four. You see? yod he vav he. The Ein Sof. Well, this is the supreme explanation of the name of God. Of course, as we explained, that also is here in us, right? Yod, hey, vav, hey. But up, 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 as above, so below, and so below as above. Synthesis. The master is formed by Atman Budi. Atman Budi, Gebura, and Gedula. Atman is Gedula, the innermost. Budi is Gebura, the divine soul, meaning the divine consciousness of Abraham, the innermost. When a Logos wants to redeem a world, it emanates from itself a celestial prototype formed by Adman Budi, Hesed Gebura. This is the Logos, the first triangle. And Hesed Gebura is what in Buddhism we call it the Dhyani Bodhisattva. This is a very higher, lower, very higher being, I mean. 
the Logos is the Sephirotic crown, the individual ray from which the innermost Abraham himself emanated. This ray is strewn. It is the Holy Trinity within each one of us. Thus, every Logos is strewn. The Father is Keter, the Elder of Days. The Son is Chokhmah, the Cosmic Christ in us. The Holy Spirit is Bina, the Divine Mother in us. The Mother carries a lamp in her hand. That lamp is Abraham, the innermost, who burns within our heart. Samael on Veor. This is what Master Samael explains in many of his books and repeats in different ways in order for us to understand not only the Bible, but other scriptures from other cultures. If we insist in the Bible, it's because in this Western world, it's what people know. But they only believe in what is written, and they don't know what they're reading. And with this, uh, only those souls that really are eager to know the meaning of the Bible, they will understand. Master Samael on Veor also said, A lethargy of innumerable centuries weighed upon the ancient mysteries. Nonetheless, the Penate gods, where in Hebrew we say, the Teraphim, continue to exist within the parallel universes. The Hierophants can converse with these Penate gods, the Teraphim, who are regions of cities, countries, towns, and homes, while in the suppress, while in the suprasensible worlds of the superior dimensions of space. The blessed protector of a town is a penate god, a teraph, or holy guardian angel. The secret rector of any city is its special deity. The protector spirit of any family is its spiritual director. All of these genii or mysterious genes of, fa of family, race, nation, tribe, or clan certainly are the penate gods, the teraphim of ancient times, who continue to exist in the superior worlds. We have conversed many times with these penate gods, regions of ancient classical cities. Some of them are suffering the unspeakable Pain, terrible karmic debts, Samael on Beor. We have there the image of Tobias, which was guided by these angels uh, in the book of Tobias, which is not in the official Bible, but you find uh, uh, the book of Tobias. Uh, he talks about this. In previous lecture, we were talking about these aspects of these uh, penate gods. And we talk about the Hashadim, or Hashed, Shadi. And we explain the different meanings of this uh, name, Hashadim, that the Bible translates as Chaldeans. And we explain that these aspects are the symbol of those monads that are still as, are not in the initiation. And of course, the penate gods of the classical Greek, Italian mythology are the same teraphim. We have mentioned this because according to the Bible in the book of Genesis, it is stated that Laban, the brother of Rebekah, the wife of Isaac, was holding the teraphim in his tent and was worshiping the teraphim. People that do not know anything about Kabbalah and alchemy, they always imagine, oh, certain idols made of clay or other material that ignorant people were worshiping. But we have to understand that uh, ancient people always worship this forces that in this day and age we call the guardian angel or archetypes 
because we have to work with all of these forces within, and those forces are connected to the forces of nature. Matthew Samael says that some of those penate gods of Teraphim are suffering paying a lot of karma because they are initiates or masters which are in process of development that are in charge of the forces of nature. We the Gnostics, we work with those forces. Well, it elementals, and we know that uh, every elemental is a soul of any plant that belongs to a family, and that family is guided by a certain angel that in ancient times were called Teraphim, or Penate. Here, for instance, uh, we understand that each one of us, individually speaking, we have our own particular guardian angel, or guider. Someone that spiritually is guiding us if we follow. Because every city in this world, even if people do not believe anymore in the Penate gods, this is always guided by spiritual forces that they are precisely manipulating the, the forces of karma. You see how the elements are uh, in development in this day and age. And uh, if you study, for instance, uh, uh, the tradition of uh, Judaism, they state that the God or the angel that guide them is the angel Michael, the ruler of, of the sun. But in all of the earth, we find always archangels, angels, which are, of course, uh, in charge of certain cities, races, groups. This is how you understand and comprehend how in ancient times people were worshipping the gods. But when we talk about yod heh bab it's a superior force that is translated in the Bible as Jehovah. Matthew Samael explains very well in the book Igneous Rose that Jehovah is the head, the top of the pyramid of the angel hierarchy. That's why Jehovah, or what the Bible is written, yod heh bab always says, you shall not worship other gods beneath me. He's on the top. It relates also to, to the holy name of God. But before entering into the path, people always follow these penate gods or spiritual forces. In India, for instance, you see, it's a lot of that. And sometimes they build a symbol of that God, which is in the lower rank from yod heh but they are in charge, according to the law of karma, to apply the karma to that particular area, town, or city, not only in India. In different places and different races, these penate gods or teraphim were worshipped. As in this case, Laban, uh, in the Bible, is written that he, he had the symbols of this in a special place, of those angels that were in charge of those forces. And this is how we understand that. Because even in these times, for instance, in the Catholic Church, you find many statues of different saints that are like Teraphim, that control the forces of nature, like in the Aztec pantheon of Mayan pantheon, Inca pantheon, and other pantheons of our Native America, we find those symbols statues that the people call idols. But there are many things that we have to explain in order to understand what an idol is, and we touched a little bit in the past lecture about it. It's another word that also is very uh, significant, which is the word golem, that all the alchemists and Kabbalists are related with, which means stupid, idiot. That's why I said, uh, uh, the Kabbalist says that in the beginning, uh, Adam, who was made into the image, you know, uh, the idol, 
the image of God was an idol, is a golem, was an idiot. If he would have been very wise, he wouldn't eat of that, uh, would have eaten of that fruit. But he did, right? Why? Because he was an idiot, he didn't know. But we are learning now, right? Not to become golems. Because most of this humanity in which we are right now, they are populated by golem. You know, made of clay, as the esotericism explains. Individuals that uh, think, reason, but they really are not wise. Fighting each other for names, for religions, which have the same archetypes, the same elements. Only a golem do that. But a human being to the image of God, which is the Zalem, the image, is different. This is what in Greek is called the Eidolon. If you make a side of you the Eidolon, the Greek Eidolon, that's something that you are very ahead of the golems. Golems are everywhere, acting like human beings with no spirituality. Easy to move. In the Judaism, you find many rabbis that can create a golem, artificial life. Not only in Judaism, but also in Tibet. With certain procedures that uh, Tibetans know, they can create a living creature that will obey, that like will act like a robot, like an android with life. And you will see this person, it will look like like a human being, but it's really a golem. It's just a creature created by magic, or who said by certain forces, energies, that only the great initials can manipulate. So that exists, the golems, or what in this day and age called the voodoo, right? Because we find that also black magic. Individuals that carve certain things with wood or with clay that they make it and through that they hurt, they perform black magic. They make an idol in order to that idol or that force to concentrate and to hurt the neighbor. So we find this type of things in the positive and negative way. The Bible also talks about the positive way, of course, and the negative. Because in the ancient times, these uh, people, uh, Jewish people, Muslims, that were worshiping the jinns, you know, they call it also jinns, negative forces. And they were making uh, idols made of that in order for, for them to come, and they were worshiping them. But you have to understand that it's not just the physical element there in front of those individuals. Behind that is a spiritual force that we are naming here Hashidim. There are different levels of that. And of course, uh, Laban in the Bible was worshiping the Teraphim, which represents those guardian angels of uh, his own town or his own race because at that epoch, people were not blind. They were seeing those individuals, they were respecting them. But they fell into black magic. And by performing those idols or those forms, were, of course, doing it not to worship gods or angels, but to do uh, the voodoo that we call in this time, in this day and age. And that was hurting humanity. And that's why it was written that commandment. You shall not make any image of anything above or below. You have to not to do that. You have to just to worship the higher God, which is yod heh bav -He. It's written in the Bible. But why is written that? Because ancient people were doing that. Especially in, in Atlantis. They were creating androids with black magic. That that in this day and age is called golem, which is a very fantastic way that people think. But there are people that have that power. Unfortunately, not a divine power. And I repeat, 
there is a lot of that among the natives of uh, America, in the Caribbean islands, in Canada, that do that in order to hurt others. And they are, of course, enjoying because they think that they are f moving the forces of nature. Yeah, they are moving the forces of nature with evil spirits, evil forces. Because in nature, is, everything is double, positive and negative. And unfortunately, the negative way is the easier way to develop. And this is how they do it. In order to show power, clipothic power, because belong to the lower dimension, Still, you know, in Judaism, they name Shaddai, El Shaddai, the almighty demon, or we call the almighty God, that is the guardian of the door. You see the Dalet in his name, Dalet. The guardian of the door of the entrance that they always touch and they respect. But this is the meaning of it. And all of that is related with the word terafim that we have to understand in order to respect other religions. Because unfortunately, the, in the pantheon of many other religions, you find these symbols of gods of the ancient times that the ancient honor him by building or by carving in stone or in, or, or in wood the image of them in order to attract the force and to receive the help, the aid. But humanity lost that. And the only thing, this is very painful, the only thing that they remain, that remain among us, is the voodoo. And this is what they do. They no longer know how to attract the higher forces in order for them to receive aid from them, but the clipotic spiritual forces from the demons in order to hurt others and to practice their sorcery or witchcraft. And from that, they are building karma, of course, going down. So still in other parts, like in India, you find uh, different uh, symbols of those forces, spiritual forces of nature that act to those, to those uh, people that worship those forces. But they see that. There are simple people that know how to see that forces. As any animal can see it. Because any dog, any cat, any horse can see those forces. They exist. And they see it. But they are not intellectual. They are not reason, reasoning. So therefore they, they respect that. And this is what happens in the development of Isaac which is the archetype that follows after uh, Abraham uh, is going to sacrifice him. The angel appear. This is an angel of Jehovah appears. says, don't do that. Don't cut the silver cord. This is how we say it. Don't cut the silver cord. Keep it united with Ishmael. Because through Ishmael we will help. But it will remain here in the Mount Moria. And when Sarah knew about all of this unfoldment, he died. I mean, she died. And then Isaac was, was of course, uh, an orphan without mother. <coughs> but the path has to continue. And the forces of Isaac has to descend to Yesod, and to go up to that in the second initiation of major mysteries. This is how it, it starts. Because remember that Malkut relate to, relate to uh, Abraham, Chesed. But Isaac, which is Gebura, relates to Yesod. That why it is written that it start working there in Yesod, Isaac, with Rebecca, that came from the land of, uh, of Laban. This Laban, of course, is the superior forces of Eden. 
If you see the graphic with the states that uh, a river went out of that, which is Eden, to water the garden you saw, and from thence, Eden, it was parted and streamed into four heads. This is how it's written. Shem, which is the first son of Noah. It says, Shem, the first. Yuspishon. This is the one which flows through the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedellium and onyx stone are there. This is Pishon. This is Gebura. That gold is, of course, the sexual force of the male in Malkut. Because that positive force of Elohim Gibor goes to Geburah down into Malkut. And this is how Ishmael received the strength. And learn to practice in Yasad. From there is where Rebecca comes, which is the second aspect of the Shekinah, or the Divine Mother, that descends from, you see here, Maor Hashidim, or the land of the Chaldeans, that is named in the Bible. This line of the Chaldeans is that above. And from there, Rebecca comes, Mary, Isaac, and they practice sexual magic in Yesod. And this is how it is written that Isaac took Rebecca into the tent of his mother. Who is the mother of Isaac? Is Sarah. And Sarah abides in that superior forces. Taking Rebecca down to Yesod and rising it to the tent of Sarah means to that. And this is how Isaac, as is written there in that uh, graphic of uh, William Blake. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca and she became his wife and she loved her and he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Genesis 24, verse 67. The river of Eden is, of course, related with the sexual forces. The creative sexual forces that we are talking about here represented by the matriarchs. Remember that is matriarchs, mem, ma. So these are the four. These are the two here. Above is the, sp the spirit of Sarah. And below, in the waters of Eden, you find Isaac and Rebecca. Because that is precisely the, the meaning of it. Of that river. The name of the second river is Gihon, the same river that flows to the whole land of Cush. Cush is here. Cush is the son of the mind, the son of Ham, the second son of uh, Noah. Represents the forces of the mind. And that's why, if we put here the first river, Gebura, we put the second in Hesed, because Kush is there. That represents the central nervous system, the, the brain and the spine of Madura. That is Kush. And Avila is here in the sexual organs, in the male. While the female is the third river, Hidikel, which is in the heart. You see, the woman is heart. And below Hedekel is Frat, I call Euphrat, I call it Euphrates. These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot, and Haran died before his father Terah. 
in the land of his nativity, in the light of the Hashedim. This is how it's written in Genesis 10, verse 11. The word Haran is backwards Nahar. You know what Nahar means in Hebrew? River. But if you switch the letters backward like this, and you put Haran. So everything in the Bible are anagrams. In order for only the alchemists to see, all the land of Haran, the river Nahar. Because it's the same letters. But sometimes they are switched in order for the unworthy to lose the meaning of it. This is how it was written in ancient times. Only for those that were serious alchemists knew what they were reading and discussing that with other initiates. Now we are unveiling that for the whole of humanity because it is completely lost. Haran, the land of Sarah and Rebekah, and also of the other wives of Jacob, are above here in that. That's the, four, the aspects of the creative energy that descend through initiation. And that's why it is written that when Isaac impregnated Rebekah, he had twins, Esau and Jacob. And Jacob was holding the heel of Esau when Rebekah gave birth to them. Right? And that's the meaning, of course, because he will hurt your head and the seed of the woman will hurt your heel. It is what uh, the Bible says. It was, it was a prophetic accomplishment, alchemically speaking. And in order to, mo to emphasize more about this, taking the heel, or taking uh, Esau by the heel, is taking the seed of the serpent, because Esau is the heel of the serpent. I mean, the seed of the serpent. You remember that the first seed of the serpent was Cain. And Cain was working with the field, with the physicality. But here, the first son of Eve, which in this case is Rebecca, is Esau, which is also the outcome of the serpent. And as Jacob was holding the heel of Esau, is the same thing as Moses when he was in front of God. And you said, you see that? Throw your reed on the ground. And the reed became a serpent. He says, now take the serpent by the tail, the heel. Mm -hmm. And the serpent became a reed, a staff, which is a symbol of the spinal medulla. In other words, Jacob represents that part of us that holds the serpent by the tail, the power of Eo by the tail, because Isaú which represents the mind or the evolution, we will say, of Cain. He's just a hunter. Cain was just working with the field, taking fruits of the earth, just identified with the physicality. But Isaú was worse. Isaú came out and already are in, in initiation. But it's that mind that we have develops with cunning. And what is what Isaú does? Goes to the field with a bow and arrow and hunt. And it's especially what happens to every initiate when we enter into the path. Many people identify with this wisdom and they want power. Isaú, their mind, is hunting there in the world for positions, for rank. They want to, their name to be pronounced. They want fame 
oh, I am the master such and such, the initial such and such follow me. And unfortunately, this is what happens in any initiates in different parts, not only among Gnosticism, in other parts of the world. Once they are uh, entering into the path, they want followers, they want worshipers. And that is how, and for that, they have to, to go into, into, the, into the world. It is, of course, positive to sacrifice yourself for humanity because we have to be charitable. Remember that Abraham has said is mercy. We have to give the doctrine. But always to point, you have to worship yourself. You have to worship your God. Don't worship anybody. Because that's wrong. Then you make an idol of the teacher. And this is what precisely this great master Krishnamurti emphasized always in his lectures. Forget about the speaker, he says. Analyze with me. Because the speaker is nobody. Right? And he's cutting that. Of one after moment and moment, because this humanity is accustomed to make a golem of the initiate inside their mind. So, but who is the one that likes that? Iso is within and grows parallel to the consciousness in Eden in Yesod. Jacob and Esau, you see, the twins. Esau was a red hair, really with fire. Do you see that? When you work in your side, you are working with both of them, Esau and Jacob. Esau smells. He would say it smells good or bad, who knows? But it smells like the genitalia, like the forces of that, that rise, even for the spirit. And of course, Isaac, which is in the left column of the tree of life, likes Isaú, which represents the mind, not the solar mind, the lunar mind. Because when you, the ego inside of you, which is the lunar mind, understand this doctrine, oh, it feels great and start to, uh, to, to hunt, to get more, more things in order to, to feel great knowledge, which is good, because the mind has to study this knowledge. And that's why Isaac, which is Geburah, loved Isau. He loved Isau too much to the point that he became blind. Later on in his age, he was completely, not completely, but he couldn't uh, see very well. And in order to, uh, to, uh, to see if Esau or Jacob was there, he wants to touch. Are you Esau? And when he was touching the arm of Esau, he felt the hair because he was hairy, like a beast. Oh yeah, my son, my first one. And Jacob was not like that. Jacob was uh, bald, I mean, not hairy. But that means something, you know. The beast in us, we have to take advantage of that. And of course, Isaú saw his first uh, right by a, for a lentil soup. It is written in the Bible. He was coming from hunting, he was very tired, and uh, Jacob was uh, making a soup of lentil, lentils. Give me a part of your lentils. Only if you sell for me right now your first right. Right? He says, you give me that, I will give you the lentils. And he said, ah, I, but I want that. I am hungry. Give me that. And he ate it. So he sold his first right for a plate of lentil soup. That reminds of somebody, right? But no, this is... Jacob likes to make lentil soup. That's the meaning of it. And after that, Isaac called Isau and says, I am blind and I think that I'm going to die. So go into the field and hunt something for me because I love your hunting. All the ranks that you acquire in the physical world, bring it to me and I will bless you. 
And Rebecca, which is Eve and evolution, hears that and said to Jacob, you know what? Your father is going to bless this hunter, which is my son too, but according to the prophets, the prophecy, I heard that when you were in my womb, that the younger were going to be the boss of the elder or the older, which is Isaú, your brother. Now go and cook something. Oh, I am going to cook it, said, uh, said uh, Rebecca, for Isaac. And then you go and play that you are Isaú. But how? I am not hairy like him. Don't worry, I will put some goat skin in your, in your arms and in your chest. And even though your father will find a little difference in your voice, he will fall into the, the trap. So he does it. He prepared that, uh, that uh, how you call, uh, uh, barbecue for him. And he goes there and says, Father, here is what you asked me for. Who, who, who are you? I hear the voice of Jacob. No, I am Esau, he says. Come here. And he touched him, right, because he's blind. And then he says, the hair, but it is a gold hair. And he says, oh yeah, you are Esau. This is the food father that you asked me for. Meanwhile, Esau is hunting there, you know, trying to find that, but Jacob is already ahead. In this, you see how the cunning of the serpent is being in the development of the soul, which is Jacob, the human soul. When we enter into the initiation, that cunning is going into us. Because when Isaac touched Jacob, he says, oh yeah, I smell the smell or the scent of my son, like the smell of Eden. Eden is your son. That smell is the animal lure that you exert when you are transmuting the sexual energy. That's the meaning of it. It means that when Jacob, the human soul, is transmuting the sexual energy in Yasat, that smell goes into the soul too. And this is how Isaac is a smell. The same. Mm, yeah, it's just the smell of Isaac because Isaac, of course, is in relation with the lunar forces that completely like, uh, he likes women. But the women that do not are initiates. This is what the Bible states. And Rebecca says, no, no, no. The blessing of Isaac, it, it, it won't fall into Isaú, but into Jacob because Isaú just like other women. No initiates. And this is how it enters. And Isaac blesses Jacob, thinking that is Isaú, because he loves Isaú more than Jacob, because Isaú is always bringing for the physical world a lot of stuff for him. And see, he is bringing a lot. And identify with that, you see how the, 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 spirit, the spiritual force is blind. He no longer see the truth because of Isau, the mind. This is precisely what happens in many initials. We get identified too much with this physical world that we become blind and we don't see what we have to see. But in the moment that we understand that in, the, in Jacob, the human soul receives the blessing and then the development of the bodhicitta starts. Because the bodhicitta is the tosoma psychicon in, in Greek. That tosoma psychicon or the bodhicitta develops in Yesod. Which is the psyche that we start developing by knowing good and evil. And thanks to the blessings that comes from the monad. And then the Isaac says, after that, he says, now I'm, uh, uh, he recuperates his sight after he blessed Jacob. 
recuperates his sight, his spiritual sight, of course. And Isaú, of course, gets angry with it. And all what the Bible talks about is nothing but an unfoldment of the Garden of Eden in relation with initiation. Because in the beginning, Cain kills Abel. Because Abel was stupid. It represents the human soul. And Cain, the mind. So the Cain was stronger than the human soul. But in this case, Jacob is representing Abel and getting the cunning of the serpent because he was killed by Cain. And now he's taking advantage of Isaú, which is the evolution of Cain, in order to go ahead in his initiation, knowing good and evil. So that is the development that happens in different levels to the initiate in Yesod. And this is how the Borichita, states the Martyr Samael, is born before the creation of the solar bodies. Because the solar bodies begun, begun in Had, in the Tzach, astral mind, mental solar mind, in Tiferet, which is a causal solar mind. But here in Yesod is where we have to develop the Borichita. That's why all of those initiates that still are single, they can work with themselves in order to develop that Borichita beforehand. Because in the second initiation of Mayor Ministers is where the Master explains it's a division of the two ethers. The two first ethers are related with the metabolism, chemical ether, and the ether of life, which is in relation with the physicality, the reproduction of the species. And that is Isaú. But the other ethers, which are the luminous ether and the reflector ether, relates to Jacob. When that is developed in the second initiation of Mayor Mystery, those are the two twins that the Bible talks about, Isaú and Jacob. And this is how Jacob starts working in the stone of Yesod and seeing the ladder from Yesod up to heaven, the different stages that he has to gain by controlling the force of the Shekinah. And that force of the Shekinah is related with his four wives. Leah represents the upper part in Eden. And Rachel represents that for that descends in order to help the initiation to go up. But those forces are related with the world of archetypes in Malkut. But in order to do that, the initial has to work with the lower aspects of the hay, which is the physical world which are represented by the maidens. You remember very well that Leah has a maiden. It's called uh, Silpa, I guess, or Silka, Silpa. It's a maiden of Leah. That maiden represents, of course, the physical world. Leah is above, because Leah is another anagram, which means Ella, goddess. That goddess, Leah, or Ella is above, while Silka is below. That's why Jacob has children with the maiden, the maid of Leah, and also with the maid of Rachel, which is called Milcha. Which are the two aspects of the same force, above and below. You see, this is how it's written in the book of Genesis. It is not as people think, literally, that Jacob had four wives. Maybe, who knows? But alchemically, Kabbalistically, we are explaining that here. Because there are many religions that justify the wives of Abraham, the wives of Isaac, and the wives of Jacob in order to be polygamists. 
This is right. If Abraham had many wives and Isaac and Jacob, why not us? The Bible is written in the Bible. Yeah, but the Bible is a book of alchemy, the book of Genesis. And it's showing the four aspects. When we talk about, for instance, the four wives of Jacob, we are talking about the four rivers of Eden in relation with the initiation, in relation with the path. Are you following me? Don't follow me, <laughs> but comprehend it. <laughs> right? Because this is something that we have to know and to comprehend about these aspects that we uh, find in the Bible. Archetypes, elements that are written there and that people read literally, and then they start following uh, the traditions that you find in different religions that emerge from that patriarch, Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph are archetypes within that we have to develop. Moses, another archetype that we have to develop. Jesus Christ is another that we have to develop. His 12 apostles, also archetypes that we had to develop through alchemy and Kabbalah. This is how we, had to, we should study the Bible under the light of alchemy and Kabbalah in order to understand that it is a book that guides initiates, written for initiates, by initiates, for the initiates. Humanity, unfortunately, has the Bible, but they don't know the meaning of it. They don't know how to interpret because they are afraid of Kabbalah and the studies of alchemy. But it, it, everything is written there related with this. So this is what we have to understand with Isaac. The forces of Isaac are Geburah in relation with Rebekah, the cow, the young cow that works in Yesod with him and develops the bodhicitta, which is that part of us that we had to develop, which means the awakened consciousness in the superior part of our physicality. Because God is merciful. If Abraham, the innermost, wouldn't have cut the silver cord of Isaac in the first initiation of major mysteries, and then he will remain as a mona there, as a master, and here like golem, stupid people don't know anything about. And at the end, we go into the evolution and we are lost. But the mercy of mercy says, don't cut the silver cord because we have to take advantage of the cunning of the serpent and to know good and evil in order for you to become as me, do my own image. So this is how uh, Jacob and Esau, the play of them in relation with Isaac, in Yesod, the Garden of Eden. Because one thing is the Garden of Eden, Yesod, and another is Eden, in that. Both are forces of the letter H in us. Do you have questions? So in the, in the Book of Oa, there's, there's a whole section on the hero twins, Unahu and Shibalanke. Can they be related to the twins of Isaú and Jacob? Yeah. Hunapu and Ishbalanke are also related according to the Popol Vuh, which is another alchemical book, very profound, related with these two polarities, right? But uh, uh, the thing is that we are just touching the symbols of this archetype, Isaú and Jacob. They have more meanings. Because uh, if we see it from another point, we will see uh, Idapingala, the two forces that emerge from, from Yasad. You see, the moon and the sun. 
y da en pingala, right? That all of us work with. And they become the sun and the moon. Yeah. And according to the Popol Vuh, uh, Hunapu and Ishvalakim become the sun and the moon. And of course, that also happens with Isau. He becomes uh, the moon, but uh, still is animal. That uh, animal mind has to transform into solar mind. And that is, uh, is, a, is a duty of Moses to do that. Yeah? What about the story of Achilles saying that Achilles healed? How would that relate to the Same thing, Achilles heal. Same thing, you see? The heel always represents, of course, the power that we have in Yesod. That's the heel. Because the heel represents Malkut, the feet. And the heel represents Yesod, which is precisely the superior aspect of Malkut. And that's why the Bible says, I will put enmity between the seed of you, the woman, and the seed of you, the serpent. You see? And this is happening inside of us. The heel of Achilles is precisely Yesod. You might find as is a uh, good lecturer, a lot of wisdom, but in the moment of the moment, in the cross, in the sexual act, in Yesod, if you fornicate, and then, uh, of course, Paris is throwing that arrow in the heel of Achilles and killing him. What happened with Achilles? He was killed, <laughs> right? By Paris, <laughs> the forces. This is all the meaning of it. Do you have any other question? Think about it, because all of that is, of course, I gave you that in, in synthesis. But remember that you have to study all the graphics given there because it is an, uh, we call uh, an extractor, a uh, compilation of many forces that we have to comprehend. So you mentioned um, the quote in the Bible where the Ruach Elohim hovers above the face of the waters. Did we equate that just as we could say like we have to have the spirit over sexuality or the mind over sexuality, mind over sex? No mind. The spirit. The superior mind. Because the mind, if you follow your mind, you are lost. The mind has to be controlled. The symbol is the, the circle over the cross, like this, the symbol of Venus. Yeah. It relates with that, right? Yeah, I mean, the symbol of the circle above the cross, the symbol of Venus, mm -hmm. of course, controlling the spirit, controlling the matter. Yeah, that's right. Right? And, and yeah, that's precisely the, the Ruach Elohim. Because the Bible said that in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. This is what happens in us. It's already created there. But in the archetypical manner. The archetypes are there in each one of us. We have the archetype. And we have the earth, the physicality. But it says that, and the earth was empty. And without form. And darkness was upon the face of the abyss, the subconscious, unconsciousness. Right? And this is what we are, a golem with archetypes within, but we don't have the, the, them developed. But the Bible says the spirit of God, the Ruach Elohim, was moving upon the face of the waters. And this is precisely, this is a clue. What waters are the Bible talking about, or Genesis? Are the superior water, the central uh, cerebral nervous fluid, and the sexual, the semen? Those are the waters. And Ruach Elohim is Chesed and Geburah, the innermost. Geburah is the spiritual soul or the spiritual consciousness of the spirit. He was hovering above those waters. And that's precisely, I said, okay, now I know where the waters are and the spirit is inside of me too. If I pray to my spirit and if I follow the steps of alchemy, then that Ruach Elohim will say, let there be light. 
and there was light. That's the first step. That light is the first initiation of major mysteries. Because that will mean light in our physicality, because we are in chaos right now. But we make the light, and that light is absorbed by the monad, by Geburah. And then the master is born. There is light there. I mean, that's why in alchemy it is stated it's a master of the day, of, of the light. So, kind of adding on to that, there's a, there's a god in the Egyptian pantheon, Neph, and the symbol of, of Neph in the hieroglyphs is the serpent over the waters and a, it, it's circling around a, a, a big vase and it's, it's breeze over the waters, it's that same kind of thing. Um, is that Neph, that god Neph breathing over the waters, is that the same thing as Nefesh? Well, Nefesh... Nefesh, in this case, is the animal soul. This is what uh, uh, the spirit, the Ruach Elohim, has to control. The Nefesh. That Nefesh relates to our animality. Nefesh is a fornicator soul. But uh, to transform that Nefesh into a human being is to make of that Nefesh a Nefesh Haya, a living soul. And there's a process. Right? The first step is recognizing that Cain is inside of us. And through initiation, to develop that cunning of Cain that unfortunately took us from Eden. And to start the work, as we explained today, in Eden with Isaac and Rebecca. In order to develop that Jacob, that uh, Psyche that needs to appear, which is precisely uh, an awakening master in this physical world. You see, for instance, uh, uh, we find uh, many initiates that acquire uh, the first initiation, but they didn't develop the second initiation very well. That's why in the book of Genesis, you find in all of the days of Genesis, it is written, and Elohim saw that it was good. But in the second day, it doesn't say that. The second day says, and Elohim doesn't see, I mean, doesn't say it was good. Why? Because it is this process. Many issues get identified with Isaú and don't pass beyond because they are identified with this physical world. We have a lot of making money. Yeah, I work with my spirituality, but uh, I want a house, I want a car, I want this, I want that, you know. And is always hunting and hunting and hunting. They are just identified with the first part of the equation. Because we have to resolve an equation in this universe. The first part of the equation is to have a position in this physical world in order to survive. But the second part of the equation is that the spiritual development. And not only we are serious and we don't identify with Isaú. Isaú needs a degree or career in order to survive in this jungle, right? And we all know that. But uh, do not dare identify with it. Let's see the, the, the example of Master Samael on Veor. He was surviving in the physical world, but he was very concerned with the second part of the equation. See, for instance, Krishnamurti. In Krishnamurti, when I see his lectures, and I hear his lectures in, in YouTube that now are very popular, when he talks, I see from him the bodhicitta. He developed a lot of bodhicitta in that superior part of his physicality. And he shows it easily and guide and teach to humanity. See, the Dalai Lama, the Dalai Lama also has a part of his bodhicitta, not completely developed. But he's, he's there, and he's working and doing his work. Part, you know, half and a half. The first part of the equation and the second part of the equation, but all of us here identify too much with the first part of the equation. 
And we forget about the second. And we go and died, and this is it. Yes? <clears throat> so to use Esau, for um, Jacob to use Esau would be to like use your physical life as, <coughs> as a means to your spiritual life, right? Like to yeah. use your job as a way to take advantage of the psychological gymnasium or meet people, introduce people to the yeah. teachings. We need the mind, we need the intellect in order to uh, communicate with each other here. But uh, do not rely only in the intellect. Because then he's always going to be strong and then you, uh, your inner spiritual master will become blind. Because you are giving him only uh, terrestrial things. Uh, but remember that we have to rely in Rebecca. Because Rebecca loved the Borichita, Jacob, very much. And thanks to Rebecca, Jacob gives food to Isaac, which is the same as Eve giving the apple to Adam in Eden. Adam was dumb and he took and bite the apple and was condemned. But in this case, it's different. Jacob, which is the outcome of the work, a chemical Kabbalistic work that we are doing, makes the food and gives it to his father. But Rebecca is in the middle of it. And he takes the food and eats. And instead of becoming blind, or more blind as he was because he's a he sees and rec recuperates his sight and keep ahead. Because he didn't die after that. He lived a lot of years and recuperate his sight. The, the thing is what you have to do. To recuperate our spiritual sight, we have to annihilate the ego. We have to rely on Rebecca, the divine young cow, the divine mother, that always help us if we meditate and we enter into the path. So, another question? Yeah, you mentioned the, the word Yod Shin Mem Aleph, and you said it represents the physical body. Ishmael. Is it Ishmael? Ishmael. Yeah. Yeah. So, wouldn't the fire be after the Mem? Shouldn't it be Mem? I mean, according to the Tree of Life. Isn't the mem, isn't the mem below the shin? Oh, yeah. well, in the name of Ishmael, you said, right? Yeah, it's kind of switched in Ishmael. It's not switched. What happened is, you know, that the water is the habitat of the fire. So when you start working with shin in your mem, that is Ishm. Ishm, right? Because are the fires of the heart that you had to work with. Okay. You know, it doesn't mean that you had to work with mem only and forget about the fires of the heart. Mm -hmm. The sheen relates to to the second triangle, and in in the yard is there. You know, ishma, and then goes up to el, ishmael, which is your head. And this is how the physical body has to work with the heart, with the Shakti potential. First, the Shakti potential of the Divine Mother is the letter Yad. And precisely, uh, Yad is written Yod, Vav, Dalet. Because Dalet is the four letter that is hidden the mystery of the four rivers of Eden, the four wives of Jacob. Or the four matriarchs, right? And all that is in us. So when we work with that yad in the fire, because the mother is the fire. The astral signature of the fire is Kundalini, the divine mother. Ish. Fire. Right? Ish ma'el. That's the physicality of each one of us. 
But remember, that name means to listen to God. Right? So listen to God. In order to listen to God, you have to work with your spinal medulla. And that is Ishmael. And Ishmael will continue working here, you know, and all the initiations. From Ishmael comes all the prophets. And Ishmael is the physicality. And we talk about that in the first lecture, or in the second, I believe, when we talk about this Hilarion 9. He says the two parts one is Ishmael and the other is Isaac. Understand, comprehend that, and then you know how your physicality is in relation with your monad. As simple as that. So you listen to your spirit instead of to your mind. Exactly. Your mind is only a vehicle that you have to utilize. I am utilizing right now in order to teach. And this is it. So thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings